Hi Floss Tube. For those who are new, thank you for stopping by and for those who are coming back, thank you for coming back. My name is Saho. My channel name is Saho Dream Stitch. And this is my eighth Floss Tube video. Oh and today's date is Saturday, December 1st, 2018. So how have you all been? I've been okay. I, as I always say, I had meant to do a video uh, about a month ago, actually, but um, just the usual work, traveling. Uh, my mother uh, had knee surgery, um, nothing serious, but she was um, in hospital for several weeks for rehabilitation and went to visit her uh, several times in the hospital. Um, it was interesting because it was really, um, I had not had a chance to talk to her a lot um, in the past year, but uh, yeah. And my brother and his family actually live with my parents, so I don't worry about them too much. Um, I occasionally talk to my brother on the phone. Um, he was with me when um, the, I visited my mother for the first time. I got to see the nephew and um, yeah, basically catch up on life and um, listen to my mother talk about my brother's wife. Um, who is, I don't like to use the word sister-in-law, but, uh, yeah. Um, yes, it's best that a sister-in-law keeps her mouth shut. Anyway, um, I have been stitching, not as much as I would like to. Uh, the last time I traveled for a week and thought I would have some good stitching time, but it turned out I was too tired. Um, and I was behind on even my needlework class lessons. But um, I have had some new starts uh, that I would like to show you. And um, at the very end, um, I'm not sure if it's a Japanese cultural segment, but it's sort of a Japanese segment and all I'm into um, where I will talk about my other winter hobby, which is figure skating. So uh, let's start with uh, the whip. Apologies in advance about the crinkling. Um, this is um, my working copy in a forest grew. Um, everybody knows what it's supposed to look like. Uh, but I picked it up for the first time in a long time, and then I just couldn't put it down. So uh, I think when I showed it to you the last time, I had about this much finished. Um, I worked all the way down to the bottom of the page and worked to the next section going up. And this piece um, is a pretty large piece. And I wasn't really sure how to work on this one. I usually use Q snaps on everything, but uh, this one, um, and I usually use an 8x8 Q-snap. Um, uh, anything bigger is too heavy for me. And um, working on a piece this big on an 8x8 Q-snap is um, too much. And I ended up using a hoop on this one. Um, didn't think I would come on um, there would come a day when I would enjoy using a hoop but it's working so far um, I can do put it on my lap stand and do two handed stitching but I'm working this one um, on 40 count 
and I'm um, using one strand of DMC so um, yes a, a hoop is working for me so far and another one of my whips is this one margarita's flower jug um, works by ABC Arlene Cohen and I'm using all the recommended colors on this one. So I have this much done. It's on a fabric that was labeled antique ivory. And um, if you have seen Arlene's uh, video um, on her new new charts um, this ca this came in her last batch of new charts but all the DMC colors are named um, antique pink antique mauve antique blue um, antique something so I chose the linen that was antique cream and I have been working on this now um I have it looks like I have made um, very little progress since I showed it to you last. Um, I don't know why, but I tend to make a lot of mistakes on this one. Um, I would stitch a chunk and then have to pull it out um, and stitch it again. Um, so um, once I stop doing that, uh, I should be able to go along further. So that was Margarita's flower jug. And those are really the only t whips I have been working on since uh, my last floss to video. And I actually, um, my birthday is in the end of October. Um, and I had a birthday start. And that is uh, this one. Um, Ian Ufundo from Hands Across the Sea Sampler. Uh, this was um, published as a special limited edition. Um, on the back is her sister's uh, Isabella Ufundo Sampler. And um, I had been wanting to work on the sampler for a while um, and was trying to um, figure out which fabric to use it on. I knew I was going to use DMC, but the fabric was a little bit of a problem because um, I usually need magnifiers to do 40 count comfortably. Um, but I really didn't want to do that because this sampler is very big. Um, so I found a piece of 36 count, um, butter pecan, I think, um, lakeside linen, um, on the market and bought, um, a stitcher's half. So what I did to start it was, yes, I, I, um, I have some, um, roller flame, frames or scroll frames, sorry. Um, and I loaded this on this scroll frame um, because it fit. But um, I found out after, well, I really knew it. W I would have this problem. I started. Um, it but found that the frame is very heavy. Um, I do not have a Lowry stand. I um, I have this lap stand. This type of lap stand. I have two of um, this type, and um, this frame would be too heavy for that. So I tried balancing it on a cushion. I tried balancing it. Um, um, holding it um, between the table and my stomach. Um, it's not quite working out, but um, it's, 
uh, and I'm still trying to figure out what to do. Um, I With Q-snaps, I always have a problem with too much extra fabric. I tried to fit it out, um, fit it into the grind guard, but um, with a piece this big, it's, it's not going to be possible. And um, I'm not sure if a hoop would work on this one. Um, the thing I don't like about the hoop is that um, it, it really does leave marks on the fabric and um, I don't know what to do with the rest of the fabric as I am working on the hoop. So if anybody has um, an idea on how to work on this bigger piece without a lorry stand or a really big floor stand, um, please um, tell me in the comments below. I'd really appreciate that. But um, I'm using one strand of DMC, so it is a nice stitch. Um, I don't plan on finishing this anytime soon. Um, hopefully in the next two years, maybe. <laughs> it's a long-term project. So that was Anne Ufendel. And uh, the next one is a very, my very belated participation in a sow and that is uh, Ink Circles Tapestry Ooh, glitter, sorry I had bought all the recommended threads months ago but I never got around to starting it um, I've just been watching everybody else make a lot of progress on it on Instagram uh, but my, I just have this little start in the corner. So I will be working on that. And um, the last uh, one is a start that I have been working on for the past three weeks. I just um, couldn't seem to put it down. Um, it is... Um, Beneath the Sunlit Sky by Blackbird Designs. Uh, this is very old. I'm assuming that it was released in 2007 because it, it stitched that in um, the model stitch. And um, there was a time when I bought a lot of Blackbird Designs and I would kit them with all the recommended fabric and threads and then I would not stitch them. So this was one of those. So I had it all ready to go. Um, I was on a Blackbird Design kick. I had purchased a, several charts this summer and just thought I should give this um, a go. So here is what I have done so far. So the inside, um, the design part of it is nearly finished, um, but there's a border that goes around uh, the design, um, but that's it. And um, I really enjoyed stitching this. And I've been stitching this while I was um, listening to music or watching videos, floss the videos and other videos, etc. So um, my plans for the end of this year is, uh, first of all, to um, if finish some of my almost finished whips that I've introduced in my videos this year and to fully finish um, some of the finishes that I've done this year, like the Mirabilia, Silver Moon Tea. Um, I have the beading to do, but I hadn't gotten around to it yet. And um, there are other whips that I are waiting um, for me to work on as well. So, um, yeah. Now, um, 
that's all I have uh, cross stitch wise and um, I have been attending my needlework classes and one of the assignments was heart anger so um, this is what I have so far um, this is done on 25 count linen uh, I've been working on e hard anger using even weave or um, 20 count cork which is a large count um, so 25 count is kind of a challenging count um, the weave is uneven I don't quite know how tight to pull the threads uh, and um, this Hardinger is supposed to have a lacy edge stitch. That's why I've pulled um, the threads out uh, before going any further. And about here, I have cut the wrong thread. So I have to repair that before I do anything else on this piece. And the other one I have been working on is the white work pulled work piece. If you could, no. A little bit better. Um, so I stitched the border, um, and then did some pulled work here, and um, the teacher calls it azure stitch. It's actually just pulled work. Um, so these nine squares are supposed to be filled with, um, pulled work, which I am dreading because it's, it's, it's really difficult, um, I'm finding, but, um, that's a challenge and I have to finish this one and, um, a hard anger and there's a really beautiful piece that I'm really looking forward to working on once I'm finished with these. So uh, that is all the stitching part of my floss do video today. And those of you who would wish to stick around for my um, Japanese segment slash all I'm into, um, please feel free to stay and listen to me ramble, if you will. Um, and the topic today is figure skating. Now, um, figure skating is very popular in Japan, and um, until recently, I ha did not realize that it was not as popular or well-known in any of the other countries. Uh, I was informed that not all Americans know who Nathan Chen is. Um, there's no one in Japan who does not know who Yuzuru Hanyu is unless they don't watch TV or um, read the news at all. Uh, um, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't know who Mao Asara is um, or Daisuke Takahashi. They're like, um, well known like celebrities um, and they sh are on the news a lot. And uh, I think I spoke a little bit about Yuzuru Hanyu in one of my videos when I talked about um, Winnie the Pooh. Um, he likes Win um, he likes Winnie the Pooh. Um, he's actually uh, two times Olympics gold medalist, uh, two times world champion. Um, 
I don't know how many times Japanese champion, um, four times Grand Prix final champion. Um, and I think a lot of people, um, if, if you watch figure skating, um, saw Yuzuru Hanyu get his second gold medal at the Olympics and all the hype around that and all the news and how wonderful a skater he is. However, um, did anyone notice this guy? He's the silver medalist. Um, his name is Shoma Uno, and um, he is uh, three years younger than Yuzuru Hanyu. Um, he grew up in Nagoya, Japan, which is um, a different area than Sendai, where Yuzuru Hanyu is from. Uh, his coach is the same coach as um, Mao Asada. Um, Machiko Yamada is his coach, along with his coach uh, Mihoko Higuchi, um, his coach and choreographer. And I have been, um, I had been a figure skate fan for a long time. I've been wa watching since before Torino Olympics. My parents really liked figure skating. I was a big fan of Daisuke Takahashi at the time, um, who, by the way, has made a comeback as a competitor this year. Um, but uh, after um, Daisuke Takahashi retired, um, I did not really um, find any skater that I liked until I fell in love with Shoma Uno. And um, I had been hesitating to talk about figure skating um, on this Flosstube channel because uh, where there's competition, there's um, controversy and rivalry. Um, and where's, where there's rivalry and fandom, there's hate. And um yeah um if you're a figure fit figure skate fan um i i think you know what i mean and um the thing i like about shoma uno is that um he has a very good work ethic uh he uh, really does not, um, he's really not concerned about titles or fame. Um, not that the other skaters are overly concerned, but he is um, very noticeably not concerned about titles um, or fame. Um, there was um, a bit of uh, let's say noise, when, um, you know, everybody would be congratulating and celebrating um, Yuzuru Hanyu's back-to-back um, -back Olympics gold. And they were interview um, Shoma Uno, who was the silver medalist. And while he um, has a lot of respect for Yuzuru Hanyu, uh, he, um, did not regard the Olympic Games as anything special. Um, he, his um, work ethic is to do his utmost best at every competition. So in that regard, uh, the Olympics was not really special to him. Uh, I'm not really sure um, how a Olympic silver medal would um, affect his um, career in the future. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, um, but he has continued to be strong. He has won um, three gold medals since the opening of the season. And his last um, accomplishment being um, this one, winning the gold, gold medal at the NHK trophy that was held in Japan. And uh, 
the thing about the Japanese men's figure skating right now is um, Yuzuru Hanyu is uh, called sometimes called um, the greatest of all time, greatest skater of all time. But um, in the last few years, he has been prone to injury, which takes him out of the competition a lot. Um, in fact, um, he had recently announced his withdrawal from the Grand Prix Finals. Um, but uh, he, um, there have been, um, last year, uh, he won the gold medal, but he was injured in the fall um, and he ha was unable to compete in the Grand Prix final or the Japanese nationals um, or the four continents. Um, these are all competitions. And um, he won the gold in the Winter Olympic Games, but he was not able to participate at Worlds. And when that happens, um, naturally um shoma uno who is um currently the second runner-up for everything as far as the japanese media is concerned um he has to um take sort of take his place and act uh, um compete um in the competition as the top runner in among the Japanese men because Yuzuru is not there and um, quite frankly he's um, well in my opinion he is not given too much credit for doing that everybody takes it for granted that he wins gold when Yuzuru Hanyu is not there and they will come back and say well you only won it because Yuzuru Hanyu was not competing well um, I, I, I don't know about that but um, none of that has seemed to affect Shoma himself. Um, he has gained confidence um, from his, um, his, in his fourth, fourth year as senior, 20 years old, uh, and he has seemed to have gained enough confidence to believe in himself. And um, as long as he could perform to his satisfaction, and to the satisfaction of the people who are um, important to him, his fans, um, he's satisfied. And that's what I like the most about him. Now, um, I am still thinking about it, but I'm going to link some videos um, of his performance. Uh, unfortunately, I was thinking about linking the official um, Japanese um, NHK, the national television video, but it seems to be geo-blocked in some countries. So um, I hope you'll forgive me if I link some um, non-official videos. Um, I'm not sh even sure if they'll stay up before you see it, but um, you can al always um, search his name and I am not going to put his name in my video title or um, in the descriptions box because there seems to be horrible trolling going on um, on any all of his videos. Um, so I, I don't want to contribute to that. But um, it has really been enjoyable watching him developed this season, um, he had, actually, he really had no off-season as, as far as his fans have been concerned because he participated in a lot of ice shows, uh, he was on TV, um, he was in magazines, um, and then the season started. So, um, hours and hours of my stitching. Um, I would watch his performance or other players' performances. I also watch the ladies' competitions, um, ice dancing in pairs, especially love ice dance. Uh, um, unfortunately, in the, Jap the Japanese media does not broadcast ice dancing a lot, um, but 
I have been watching live streams and such and enjoying them. So, um, and um, apologies if you didn't like what I said about certain skaters. I don't mean anything by it. Um, I just hope to adore my favorites and um, respect the fact that everybody has different opinions. And um, because Shoma Uno himself is not really concerned about titles, of course he wants to win, he's a competitor, but um, yeah. So that was my all I'm into segment for today. And um, I hope everybody has, um, in the United States, I hope everybody's had nice Thanksgiving holidays. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys the winter holidays. Uh, um, as for myself, work will quiet down during the month of December because all of my overseas colleagues will be out for the um, Christmas holidays or Hanukkah holidays or which, um, whatever winter holidays. And um, I hope to having a nice and quiet new year and get a lot of stitching done and um, catch up on a lot of YouTube floss tube videos because I haven't been able to watch as many as I would like. So um, until we meet again, um, stay warm. If you're um, in the winter area, um, stay cool. If you're in the summer area, um, stay well. And um, happy stitching. Bye.